86. During a recent winter month in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, it was necessary to obtain 3,500 kilowatt hours of heat provided by a natural gas furnace with 89% efficiency to keep a small house warm. The efficiency of a gas furnace is the percent of the heat produced by combustion that is transferred into the house. So then letter A says that assume that the natural gas is pure methane and determine the volume of natural gas in cubic feet that was required to heat the house. The average temperature of the natural gas was 56 degrees Fahrenheit, and at this temperature and a pressure of 1 atm, natural gas has a density of 0.681 grams per liter. Okie dokie. All right. So in essence, right, we need to find out how much actual gas was used in order to heat this house. They told us that... It took us 3,500 kilowatt hours, right? This is kind of a unit per energy, per time. The H stands for hours, in order to heat this furnace. Now they're saying that this was the amount that you know provided uh, the house with the heat, but the furnace was only 89% efficient. So that means that the total number of heat had to be more than this because only 89% of the, the heat was going to the house. So the first thing is, you know, I don't like kilowatt per hour. We've been using joules all this time. So let's first convert into joules. I wrote down the conversion down here. So I have 300 or actually 3,500 kilowatt hour. And for every one kilowatt hour is a ton of joules, 3.3 times 10 to the six joules. So use that conversion, right? Kilowatt hour goes on the bottom, joules goes up on the top. For every one kilowatt hour, there's 3.6 times 10 to the six joules. Kilowatt hours gets canceled. And now we say bye-bye to that unit because we're now gonna be working in joules. So 3,500 times 3.6 times 10 to the 6. And I got a lot of joules. 1.26 times 10 to the 10th joules. All right. Now remember, this was the actual amount that was heating the house. But this was only 89% of what was totally, you know, made the house run. So if this is the 89%, we need to find the total amount of heat that was actually had to be added. That's what we need to find out. Now, the one, the total amount is gonna be more than this, right? So we're just gonna use like a simple percentage of formula to just get the total amount. Remember that a percent is just part over whole. So if it's 89%, right? That would equal the part divided by the whole times 100, the part, is the 1.26 times 10 to the 10th, and we're solving for how much total heat we needed. So if I just, you know, divide by 100 on both sides, I get, I'll just put it over here, 0 0.89, that's in, there we go, equals 1.26 times 10 to the 10th over x. If you cross multiply, right, it would be 0 0.89, x equals 1.26 times 10 to the 10th, and then just solve for x. That's gonna be the whole amount that we needed. Okay, so let's just say x equals what? This divided by 0.89. So I get 1.42 or 1.4, I guess 1.416 times 10 to the 10th, and that's now in joules. So maybe I'll just put that number here. All right, so I got 1.416 times 10 to the 10th, and that's joules. Now I'm just going to erase all this other math because we didn't need it, so just pause the video if you need it, just to write it down, but this is going bye-bye, bye-bye. And I guess we could leave the first part up there. It's not really harming anyone. Okay, so now the natural gas is pure methane. Remember, methane is CH4. So that might come in handy. 
So we have to basically determine the volume of that natural gas, aka the volume of the methane. Now they give us a density, right? And here's my volume. I want to get to liters, but if I want to get to liters, I need to have a value in grams. The only thing I have right now is the total amount of heat that was needed, you know, to heat the house. And this is now going to be with the methane. So we've been seeing that this is basically combustion, right? And it's at it right here. It's produced by combustion. So maybe the next step, I'm just going to write the combustion equation for methane. So this will kind of be like a little review. We've done tons of these, right? Methane gas plus O2, right? Combustion is always plus O2, and that will yield CO2. And then H2O, I'm going to put it as a gas because technically this is high heats. So it should be in terms of a gas steam and not liquid water. Uh, in order to balance this, I have four hydrogens. So I'm going to put a two over here. And now let's see, I have four oxygens. I have two oxygens plus two oxygens. So I'm going to just put a two in front of here. All right. Now, in order to make this work, we need to know what the delta H is of this equation, right? So we could either go into the tables and do our handy dandy equation, products minus reactants, but I just looked up what the delta H for this whole reaction is. And the delta H, the amount of heat that is produced for this reaction is 890.8 kilojoules per mole. And this should be a negative because of it being so exothermic and it's releasing heat. Now I have a correlation between the amount of heat that I need to heat the house and a kilojoule per mole. So if I want, I can just maybe convert this into kilojoules, right? If I want this in kilojoules, I'm just going to divide this by a thousand. So let's see what that is. 1.416 1.416 times 10 to the 10th, divide by 1,000. You're basically just subtracting 3 from the exponent. I just want the number in my calculator because we're going to have to use it in a little bit. Yep, just double checking. Okay, start with what you're given. So I'm going to start down here. I have 1.416 times 10 to the seventh kilojoules. Use the delta H for the reaction to go from kilojoules to moles. So I'm going to times by a ratio. I'm going to throw the kilojoules on the bottom. Mole goes up on top. And specifically now, if we want to say specifically, this is mole of the methane. There is 890.8 kilojoules per every one mole of the methane, because there was literally one uh, coefficient in the front here. But now we're not done, right? I'm at mole now. If I want to still get to this liter, I need to convert to grams. So I'll just keep going. Times by ratio, put the mole of CH4 on the bottom, the gram of CH4 up on top, and now this is a gram to mole conversion. That's the periodic table, right? One mole equals the mass on the periodic table. So it's 12.01 plus 4 times 1.008. I get roughly 16.042. Cancel this out. And now we're almost there. Let's use the density formula because now I have grams. I can use this to go from grams to liters. So let's keep going, guys. Grams on the bottom, so grams of CH4 and then liters of CH4. 0.681 gram per every one liter. So the one liter goes on the top and the 0 0.681 goes on the bottom. Grams cancel out and now we're only at liters. Let's just move this over one little itty bit because there's one extra thing. We want to determine the volume of natural gas in cubic feet. We're in liters. But I wrote down the conversion for you guys right here. So it's just one more conversion times by the ratio liter 
of the CH4, or just liter in general, goes on the bottom. Cubic feet, aka feet cubed, goes up on the top. And for every one feet cubed, so the one goes on the top, there was 28.317 liters. Cancel the liters out. And now we finally have our answer. Ooh. So 1.416 times 10 to the 7th divided by 890.8. .8. I just want to make sure I 890.8. .8. Okay, cool. Times by 16.042 divided by 0.681 and then divided by again by 28.317. And I get... Maybe I should put this in sig figs. I see that there's like three sig figs, I guess. Eh, do I really care about sig figs? No. But I'll say 1.32. So 1.32 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's feet cubed of the methane. That's how much was needed to heat the house. And there we go. Part A is done. This one's going to be a wild ride, guys. So hang on to your hats because we, we're going on to part B in a little bit. So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. And I'll see you in a little bit for part B, all right? Okay, see you then. Bye.